Hi, everyone. Hello. Welcome to uh, August 23rd, where today's entry is titled, It's in Your Self-Interest. It begins with a quote by Seneca. Therefore, explain why a wise person shouldn't get drunk, not with words, but by the facts of its ugliness and offensiveness. It's most easy to prove that so-called pleasures, when they go beyond proper measure, are but punishments. So like if you like, aka like every, anything too much of anything is a bad thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And also like he's saying, I think, uh, explaining why a wise person shouldn't get drunk. It's not like you need a whole bunch of flowery language to describe that. Like it's obvious why that's a bad idea because it's ugly. It has an ugliness and an offensiveness to it. It's like self-evidently bad when you look at the thing. Mm -hmm. When you look at the excess of mm -hmm. whatever, whatever yeah, yeah. it is. Yeah. And that's the, that's the opposite. I mean, the, not opposite, but that's kind of uh, part of the humble. Like being humble in, when you be humble with your wins or something or with your successes, if you will, you know. Like, because that helps you, that being humble helps you not to get drunk off of your own, uh, you know, juice. Humility you is know? maybe a tool of moderation in some way. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. let me not mm -hmm. think too much of myself. Yeah, yeah it's like he's using drunk as an example and maybe I would benefit from a full list of those examples mm -hmm. because that the one of like humility, like not bragging about my accomplishments or something or not thinking too much of them, like that's an, a different example that wouldn't have necessarily have been obvious to come to mind. Oh, I thought because he was talking about like drunk on your own power or drunk on your own. That's how I understood it. Oh, not drunk I mean, in like alcohol, but drunk in like on your own success and on, on your own power or something. I mean, I don't really know what he means, like not with mm -hmm. words, but by the facts of its ugliness and offensiveness. It seems to me he's talking about dr like just drinking, mm -hmm. pure drinking, and he's saying like mm -hmm. you don't need words to explain why this, why a person shouldn't get drunk. Mm -hmm. On its own, it's ugly and offensive. And like, it's easy to prove that these so-called pleasures, mm -hmm. so now he's putting drinking into the category of pleasures and he's mm -hmm. saying when they go beyond proper measure are but punishments, mm -hmm. but it, a pleasure could very well be me thinking too much of something that I've done or something like that. And so, um, I'm just kind of like thinking to myself here, like, oh, it would be nice to have a list of those examples of what all of these pleasures are because I'm sure there are less obvious ones that are relevant to me that I need to learn about um, outside of drinking which is not ha hasn't really been a problem in my life for a while and then also what you're saying of like thinking too much about your accomplishments like right on there um, but also doesn't feel like it's like right on the money for what I need to learn. Hmm. Or like one hidden, uh, hidden one that I can kind of vaguely see is the being like, um, you know, like you can be drunk on your own success, but you can also be drunk on your own misery. Totally. And I'm yeah. more on that. I'm more on that side of the spectrum. And so like you're making the misery and it's like if the misery is not, if I don't create this misery or if I don't think that life is terrible, then I don't have an excuse why life is the way it is, except I haven't done. It's on me. It's on my shoulders. Right. So I can, you know what I mean? So, 
So ultimately, like, you can use it, um, like, it's hidden in there, you know? Yeah, for sure. I, uh, the getting drunk on your own misery is my, mm-hmm. the thing I tend towards. Right. Like, unless I'm miserable, I don't have a good enough reason why I feel so crappy. Right. So then, then what it is, is my life is miserable. Okay. Now I can feel crappy. But ultimately, why you might be feeling crappy is not because life is miserable. It's because we You haven't done something. I haven't done the thing that I need to do. And I'm like, ah, I don't know how to do it or something. So I just say, life is miserable. And like, I just kind of, like, it's an excuse. I get drunk on it. Like, oh, like, yeah, life is so terrible. How Life is so specially bad towards me, right? But it's like, no, 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 it's not. It's you not doing the things that you said that you want to do. And you finding excuses and you have all these, like, weird um uh, mechanisms how to excuse myself from like doing the thing that i want to do but if i just leave it like that then i feel bad right so that then, then it's then i say i need some i need some um mechanism so i don't feel so bad so oh let's complain about life and this whole thing oh life is terrible to me oh i'm especially bad okay oof. Ah, i feel so good how especially bad i have it like it's a reward in 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 the bad or something it's a weird way of um, looping it on itself or something you know yeah that's interesting i don't know if it's exactly the same for me, it's like, I, maybe it is like, it feels more so because to get drunk on something, like there's a period where you're not drunk yet. Like I'm getting tipsy on something. And so I can think about like a bad day or a bad mood as something that I can get drunk on as in like, I can let it go too far. I can let it extend too long and I can say like, I kind of like stew in the misery for longer than is actually useful or needed. Mm -hmm. And there'll be that recognition at some point where it's like, well shit, like I don't have to feel bad about this all day, but like, nevertheless, I have been. Mm And so there's like this, like, let it go, like, so sober up from the, your drunken stupor and let go of this because it's not helpful mm-hmm. any longer. Yeah, in theory, like, um, a train of thought is ultimately being drunk on something. You mean like our attachment to a train of thought? Yeah, is like, maybe... it's just like, oh, I just have to keep going and then happen, this happened that happened and oh my god that happened and it's like that's like a little bit of a drunkenness we're in these we're we're paying attention to something in our mind or something and uh, it's you know we're kind of like attracted to be there or something you know well yeah I mean and that's what we, happens uh, in meditation when you sit down and it's like oh okay like I just go on this trail of thought that I'm not even aware that I'm doing it and then a few moments later I'm like wait, shit, I'm supposed to be concentrating on my breath or I'm supposed to be concentrating on whatever this moment, whatever the contents of this moment are in my body or in my surroundings or something. So it's like, yeah, maybe every time my attention is hijacked in that way where my attention is doing something without me consciously making a choice for my attention to do that thing, it's sort of like my attention is just being like pulled along that is an example of drunkenness perhaps yeah like drunk on a train of thoughts or drunk on thoughts maybe or something you know maybe sometimes it doesn't even have to be a train of thought it could be one thought that's re- repeating and and we're like obsessing about it the obsessing about it is like being obsession drunk is it. drunk yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. 
don't know what you're doing. <laughs> yeah. Okay, cool beans. Let's see Ryan. Okay. Ryan says, is there a less effective technique to persuading people to do something than haranguing them? Is there anything that turns people off more than abstract notions? That's why the Stoics don't say, stop doing this, it's a sin. Instead, they say, don't do this because it will make you miserable. They don't say, pleasure isn't pleasurable. They say, endless pleasure becomes its own form of punishment. Their methods of persuasion, hew the line in the 48 laws of power, appeal to people's self-interest, never to their mercy or gratitude. If you find yourself trying to persuade someone to change or do something differently, remember what an effective lever's self-interest is. It's not that this or that is bad. It's that it is in their best interest to do it a different way. And show them, don't moralize. And what happens when you apply this way of thinking to your own behavior? Okay, snap. So he's like really emphasizing a totally different part of Seneca's quote, mm -hmm. which is like not with words, but by the facts of its ugliness and offensiveness. And then, mm -hmm. yes, I totally love that of like appealing to somebody's self interest. Like if I'm trying to explain something to somebody else, Oftentimes I take it from the approach of, well, I'm excited to share this thing, or I want to do this, or I want this person to care about that. But that's all from like my self-interest. But they're also kind of a drunkenness on, on, on self. Right. Yeah. And so rather it's like, okay, no, if I have something to say to this other person, how can I see it in such a way that it will be obvious to them when I say it that this is the right thing to do because I've framed it as being in their self-interest. Like something they want and they need and they agree I want and need this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and that, that means we cannot be drunk on our self during that time. We have to be drunk on them. We have to, you know what I mean? We have to be interested in them and be drinking everything that they're providing just so we can then relate to them. And then that's how they would know like, ah, wow, this is a good connection. Yeah. Yeah, because a lot of the conversations about, are about, our discussions are, a lot of our discussions are about what I think and then your answer is what you think and then my answer to that is what i think and it's this it's not about like oh i get what you think and then you would say that to me you know what i mean and i'm not saying between you and me sure we have our own little quirks with this but even just anywhere right outside of you know in the store and in you know in conversation at work with people and something you know it's this it's this like <clears throat> exchange of what we already know um, which is maybe you know. fine because even what he's saying is like you have something to tell somebody so like in his example he's like well the thing to tell them is that drinking will make you that drinking is bad mm -hmm. or but he's saying frame it in the way where well why, why don't you want to drink because it makes you miserable and that person cares about their level of misery. They don't want to be miserable. So now I've taken something that occurred to my brain in one way and I've translated it into something that the other person can latch on to. Mm -hmm. I relate to, yeah, for sure. There's something in, the, in their benefit there. Like I've thought through my oh, delivery. Yeah. I've thought through that delivery to the point where I'm like, is this going to be maximally beneficial and useful to this other person? Mm -hmm. Not just, well, this is however I want to say this it. This is how I would deal with it if it, I were in your shoes. Well, yeah, but yeah, it's like, do you understand what actual shoes I'm in? Right. So because maybe if you knew, then you would have a different answer or something. 
or you would have the same answer, but you would say it in a Maybe much different, a different way. way or something. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because then, yeah, it might be the same solution, but just how it's applied and how it's communicated, uh, it's directly connected to its success or something, you know? Yeah, it's not... It's it, not just the tool it, it's or not, something. It's like, yeah, yeah exactly. It's how not, we receive it. The uh, message, it's like... Do we believe it? <laughs> yeah, trust How it. the message yeah. is delivered is is always like when 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 you and I are in like a moment with each other and then you're like well you don't you just don't want to talk about this and I'm like no I do want to talk about it but I don't I don't want to talk about it the way we are talking about it right now it's like always the delivery like always the approach is the thing that like makes or breaks the the situation hmm. I don't know if always but like there's a big piece there of the message in and of itself is fine, but how the message came across is where the abrasion, the friction, the retaliation comes into play. And I'm not saying just between you and me, I'm saying like, yeah. but with an, any interaction, like if I think about, you know, when do I get feisty with people? It's not the fact that they said this thing. It's the fact that they said this thing in this way, in this delivery style. And that delivery style makes you react in a certain way for some reason. Well, yeah, it's like a huge difference. Like you can mm -hmm. say the same thing, but if you say it angrily mm -hmm. versus if you say it calmly, like I'll react totally differently to you. And then if you could say it calmly, but also in the language of my self-interest, oh my gosh, I'll be a puppy eating out of your freaking hands. You know what I mean? Like this is the power of delivery, of delivery style. <laughs> sure. What? <laughs> I mean, that's, that's a very delicate um, way to communicate or something because you now have to be like, well... <clears throat> you might even you might communicate that you might communicate the benefit for that other person you might do all of that stuff and it's still received as like hey you're telling me what to do or something you know what I mean? potentially um but it will most i mean it's hard to know without having like a control moment or something but like theoretically even if it's not received well, it will probably be received better than phrased in a different way. Mm -hmm. Better, yeah, maybe. Yeah, I can see that maybe, yeah, yeah, yeah. Cause like, if I'm not arguing that, that you should just say it the way you're saying it, but as, as long as it's not offensive, I think that you should say it the way you're saying it. It's not like, oh, I have to now think about how this person is uh, going to receive it based on my experience with this person. So I have to reward what I want to communicate to that specific person this specific way in order for that person to receive it in, in the way that it's understood, right? And now, like, if I, I just feel like that's very... Um, cumbersome or something. I mean, the way you phrase I mean. it sounds like a very complicated mental process. Yeah, yeah, it doesn't yeah. feel like that complicated mm. to me. It's like mm. more so like, hey, I'm a person, you're a person. I know what's important to me. Therefore, I can make some guesses about what's important to you. And now if I can take my message and somehow put it through the filter of like, well, what does this other person care about? What's important to them? How can I like attach this to something that is meaningful to them in their life? Like, I'm, I think there will be better results for me on the other side of that. So then therefore I'm like, okay, more ROI seems like a good, like just sort of maybe skill to start really taking some time to build up and knowing like where I'm starting from is not in that masterful communicator place like I can't expect that I'm just going to suddenly be communicating and I'm 
totally different, amazing way all of the time. But I can look for little wins <clears throat> and orient myself towards little wins, I guess. Yeah, good one. Okay, anything else to do? I'm good. Um, yeah? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, I'm good. Cool. All right. All righty. Thank so you tomorrow. for joining us today. We'll see you tomorrow. That's not time enough.